So today we're working with covalent compounds, which are the easiest, or at least that's my opinion. Most, people opinion. most people's opinion Friday will work with ionics and then next week we'll work with acids. And it's important that you can identify when you look at a compound, which kind you're working with because they each have their own set of rules. So nomenclature means naming. So most of this unit is about naming compounds. If you have the formula or if you have the name, being able to write the formula. There's a little couple of other things we cover, but that's the majority of it. So we're, today we're gonna look at binary molecules. So bi means two. So these are gonna be compounds that are made up of two elements. And molecular means covalent. And covalent compounds are non-metals combined. So what we're looking at today are compounds that are made up of two non-metals. Non-metals, unlike ionic compounds where you have a metal and a non-metal, non-metals can come together in a variety of different ways. I may have CO for carbon monoxide, then I may have CO2 for carbon dioxide. And because of that, we use prefixes to let us know how many atoms we have of each of those. With ionic, it's about making the compound neutral, so it works a little bit different. So these will be the prefixes that we're using. You need to memorize these pre prefixes, Friday's Open Notes quiz, so you will have them for that. But uh, after that, then you'll need to know them for the test, and then we have the test over this year, and also the semester test. All right. All right, so for our covalent compounds, we simply write what we see. There is no prefix on first element until two atoms. So if in other words, I see nitrogen here, and the fact that it doesn't have a prefix, that tells me that I only have one nitrogen. That's a little bit different because the second element always has a nitrogen. So if I only have one of the second element, I would have to have the mono prefix. Another thing is you have to look at the root of the second um, element to get the name. So the first element, the ending isn't changed. All you're doing is tacking on a prefix if you have more than one up at the front. So it's easy to figure out what your first element is. The second element always has, has to have a prefix and the ending is changed to ID. So to figure out what the element is, you have to look at the root, which is gonna be kind of found in the middle of your, uh, middle of the name. And if it, I guess most of them are very obvious, but if you get stuck on that uh, toward the bottom of your notes, you have the common roots that you'll see. Remember, we're working with just covalent compounds today, so that narrows us down to a really small portion of the periodic table. All right, so let's look at that. So we got nitrogen, no prefix, so that tells me that I just have one. Here I have tetrasulfide, so my root is sulf, so I'm going to put an S. And then tetra tells me how many of my sulfurs I have. Four. So that's it, NS4. Carbon dioxide. So ox is my root. So what would that be? Oxygen. And then because of the dye, I have two. Oxygen, still no prefix monofluoride. The second element is always going to have a prefix, so fluor would be what element? Fluorine. And since it says mono, then that would be all I would need to put. 
Remember, you don't put subscripts of one there, uh, I just understood. So why don't y'all try those last few and then we'll flip it and go the other way. All right, sulfur hexafluoride, what do we have? Six, perfect. Try oxygen decanitride. Tetrafluorine monophosphide. Pete, just pick my front head, some to it. Hexafluorine nanosulfide. F6, what else do we have? Oh, S9, nano. Okay. And heptabromine octanitride. ER7, N8. All right. So pretty easy. So now, whenever you're out with your family, you can impress them by being able to say the name of a compound if you see it. Oops. Forget that. All right. So now we're just going to flip it the other way around. Um, when you're now you're going to be given the formula and you need to write the name the less electronegative element is always given first and that one's going to be the one that is farthest to the left of the periodic table so just like with vesper your center one was the farthest to the left Usually you don't even have to worry about that because most of the time you'll have the formula and you're writing the name or the name that you're writing the formula. Um, the first element is only given a prefix when it has more than one atom. So what that means is that you should never start the name of a covalent compound with mono. The second element is always going to have a prefix. It's uh, named by combining the prefix that indicates the number of the atoms, then the root of the element, and then the end is always changed to I. So you have prefix, root, I. So that means all of these, whenever you're naming a covalent compound, everything should end in I. The O or the A at the end of the prefix is usually dropped when the following prefix begins with another vowel. So like M-O-N-O-O. -O -O. Instead of doing that, you would drop one of those O's. Most of the time it kind of looks weird. If you forgot to drop an O, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna count that wrong. I mean, obviously you still know what we're doing right here. So that's not a huge thing. Like I said, if you struggle with any of the roots, although they're, these are really common, 
Um, probably the one that people struggle with a little bit is iode, iode, because it just we don't use it as much. But there are your roots if you need to or if you have trouble with those. And then the first, just to remind you, element name does not change. So I'm just taking an element of the periodic table and tacking a prefix on it. All right. All right, so we'll look at some of these. So my first one, C, Cl4, since carbon does not have a subscript, that means I only have one atom. I don't use mono, I just put carbon. The second element always has to have a prefix. So the prefix for four is tetra. And then Cl chlorine, so that's chlor. And then the ending stays in ide. And I know sometimes whenever I whenever we have chlorine like a, on a test or quiz sometimes you're like whether it's chlorine or whether it's carbon and iodine so if you ever have a question just ask me I think on the test just tomorrow what that came up and I put like I like I had uh, chlorine in parentheses so you would know that but if you ever have a question let me know because it, it, when it's typed out it's kind of hard to see all right next one I have in no subscript so that one is nitrogen and then my second element always has to have a prefix. So three would be tri. And then my root would be floor. And then end in ide. All right, I'm going to add another one down here because there's only one where you have more than one of the first atom. So why don't y'all give those a try? Only time that matters if you're just writing the symbol, the symbol always has to be that part.
All right, P B R five. What do we have? Phosphorus penta brom hide S F six. Exa four ride SO three. Sulfur tri oxide PCL five. Phosphorus penta floor hide. Finally, we have the first element that has more than one, so we're going to finally need a prefix. So we would have what? Dinitrogen. And then the second one always has to have a prefix. So you have to put monoxide for the second one. Oh, uh, that's for my first one. I'm doing the second one, monoxide. Let's see. Dinitrogen would be my first element. And then my second element, I just had one oxygen. PF4. Phosphorus tetra. Hexa. <laughs> All right. And then my last one. Dinitrogen dioxide. All right, so pretty easy. So you got a little bit of time to work on your practice. Like I said, that's all the naming practice. So if you get past, I think the first couple of pages are covalent. And then after that, it's ionic and then it's the acids. So that's why all of it's there. So you haven't got to, obviously, you haven't got to some of those. So the first couple of pages, I think you're good with. Anybody have any questions on it? So we'll have, this is not on the test tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a quiz on Friday and you'll have open notes for that. So at that point, you don't have to have those prefixes memorized, although we all probably have a lot of them memorized already.